affordable housing and housing Kenyans. You know, statistics show that at least 25% of Kenyans live in urban areas and 60% of that population lives in the slum. The number is expected also to rise considering the pool factors and the push factors from urban areas and from the rural areas respectively. And the low income areas is growing rapidly. So, so it is a dream of every Kenyan to own at least a decent home that they can live in and call it and be comfortable and call it a, a home, you know. Leading to this, this led to the government to come up with affordable housing under its big full agenda. So my question tonight to my panelists, before I even ask them that, I want them to introduce themselves. Karibu Nisana, I'll start with you. You can introduce yourself and where you come from and your company and all that. Thank you very much. My yes. name is Pamina Skariuki. Mm. I'm the managing director at uh, Nyotanjema Homes, which is a resident company. I call it a youth resident company uh, based in Nairobi with an intention and an agenda to uh, providing lighting up investment opportunities in the real estate sector. We provide land selling, we provide housing provision selling, and also give investment advice to any in person who is looking to invest with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what generally we do as yes. a company. Yes. And you, Steve. Hi, mm -hmm. I'm Steve Kenyanjui, yes. as you've heard, mm -hmm. and I run Swadip Construction Company Limited. What we do, we, uh, we do design and build. Actually, what uh, that entails from the design process to the construction as a contractor. Yes. And actually, what we want to do is uh, our third phase is we dream and we build. So what we want to do is uh, actually make as seamless as possible that process of uh, house and homeowning so that you can be able to have as many people getting to be homeowners. And also, I think one other thing we also want to do is to make sure that they, we safeguard our clients' interests so that whatever dream they, they have, mm -hmm. we visualize by be giving them the home. Yes, thank you for having us. Karibu <laughs> Zara, <laughs> you guys are doing an amazing job. So you've heard the statistics. 25% of Kenyans live in urban areas and 60% of that live in the slums. And the government came up with this affordable housing agenda. What exactly is affordable housing? You know, it's a, such a general term. Affordable housing can be 10,000 to me or 30,000 to you or 50,000 to the other person. So what exactly is affordable housing according to you? <laughs> Thank you for that question. Mm. The reality is uh, uh, the government agenda, as you have said, 60% of those who live in urban centers mm. actually have a, have a lower capacity to even be able to purchase a house or even to own a house with the current market rate. So the government came up with an idea of doing houses between 600,000 to 3 million. So the highest house that they are going to be selling is going to be 3 million. That is a three bedroom house. Mm. Whereas a one room house, which they call single room, is going to be going for at least 600,000. Mm -hmm. When you look at that, the intention of the government is to look at it from the perspective of allowing one to own the house with their own rent. So if you are paying a rent of 5,000, that is what is, has been planned, that you'll be paying for that house for 5,000, but living towards owning your own house. So I believe, for me, that is a very good agenda. Yeah. And uh, having been involved in the preliminary stages with the CS and the Minister of uh, Housing, mm -hmm. I believe this was a very brilliant idea because it is going to solve the problem where the slums may, will be converted to become quite, let me say, quality or uh, attractive houses mm. to any person or maybe, say, decent houses. Okay. The issue is not cheap houses, <laughs> but affordable and decent, decent houses. houses. Yes. yes, Steve, let me throw this one to you. Yeah. Do you think the government plan is achievable? So 2022 is not. Mm, I think uh, currently we have gone. I think uh, like, uh, the government has done quite some considerable job mm. about that, and actually you can find there are about uh, 8,000 units going to come up here to Ngara. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, so far so good, but I think there's more work to be done, and I know because you have a deficit of. 200 units per mm, year. You can hold it like this. Eh? Per year. So you, you see that uh, we really have a lot of work to do. It's still, uh, I think, a chunk of that 500,000 uh, housing that, that they want to to actually actualize. It's going to be a good, big, big, big way to be able to actualize. And actually, uh, talking into terms and actually looking at the focus about the low income manners, because uh, you find uh, around 2% uh, out of the total, total, total housing done, 2% mm -hmm. is only for the low income manner so we find it's quite a small chunk, a small, big chunk. small percentage yes yeah mm. 
Let me let me throw this one to Pamina. Eh? Mm -hmm. Despite the perception that informal settlement uh, housing is very affordable or low, are there cases of people who cannot afford that affordable housing? Uh, facts have it that uh, in Kenya there are people who are earning less than a dollar per day. Okay, hold it like this. Yeah. Uh, in Kenya, mm. there are people who are earning less than a dollar per day. <laughs> so that means. Even if you want to eradicate the issue of slums, mm. it may not eventually go to an end. But what I believe the government is trying to do is to bridge the gap. As my, my brother has said, the, the agenda is focused at trying to, to bridge the gap and at least reduce the deficit. As we know, there are 200,000 houses deficit every year. Mm -hmm. And that means that this cumulatively happens. So if, for instance, every year we have 100, 200,000 which are missing, even if the government was to give the 500,000 that they have promised, it means we still have a deficit at par then. Mm -hmm. But this, as I said, there are people who can afford a house worth 6 million, uh, 600,000 to 3 million. Mm -hmm. So there are still people who cannot be able to manage that. However, with the upgraded slums, we, it means that the others will also be able to get aff affordable. Uh, rentals. Mm. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, we, we have that there's a deficit of at least 150,000 to 200. Mm. And and uh, the government is, is at least building 20,000 20, houses mm -hmm. per annum, mm -hmm. which cannot even match up to the deficit. So, should the government give uh, tax incentives, incentives for every, for, for, for the investors to build more low-income houses? To, to to cover the deficit, mm -hmm. Steve? I believe so. Mm. That should actually be the, the motive. Because we find developers, when you give them, it's like uh, giving something that they can uh, that they can uh, gain from and uh, find something that they can have a, a, an added advantage. So I think uh, having that uh, that initiative of tax advantages, incentives, or find probably when you do more housing, you get even the cost, the tax you pay is less cheaper. So you find those things are some of the things that we're really calling for in the industry because they help and they also bring even more because you find probably even investors may be shy to come in, but when you give them such tax incentives, you find uh, such unsubsidized, like probably in materials, you know, people are able to come in because it's that big cap mm -hmm. and it needs to be half something that should be done about it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Pamela, mm -hmm. since you are in the real estate, mm -hmm. let me ask you, yes. why are investors only focusing on middle and high end <laughs> income houses? Is, is there a ready market or what, what, what is the issue? Why can't they go and target the low income earners? Uh, I will start that, uh, I respond to that question in two ways. One, mm. from the way the government has approached that issue, the reality is they have now changed from being the developer as a government to being a, 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 a facilitator towards development. So that means, as we speak, I can confirm that it is very possible for these uh, real estate companies to actually partner with the government. I, am, uh, I have some friends of mine mm. who are actually approached by the government because they are developers like me. Mm. And they were asked whether they can partner with the government to do 300 houses for the low, lower market. Mm. However, why we have been focusing on the middle income, these are the people with dis disposable income. Because somebody, if you look at the statistics, have it, that only 1% of Kenyans earn more than 500,000. About 7% uh, of Kenyans mm -hmm. earn between actually 50,000 to 500,000, with majority of them, 80% of them earning below 100,000. Mm. That means even if we are to look at the, our, our financing industry, that those majority of them may not have qualification to own or uh, to even acquire some loan. That means the accessibility to a uh, loan facility is limited to those who are the minority or uh, the majority with less income from their own. Uh, from their own proceeds. In that case, why the private developers, remember that they are also in business, they are there to make profit. They look at where their risk are minimized so that they can maximize their returns, as opposed to going to where the risk is high and also an assured return. <laughs> so in that case, uh, definitely <laughs> any person who is in business, you are looking at where you can give it, be able to match and also increase your, your returns. <laughs> yes, that's why the, the focus has been on the hired oh. and the middle income. But I believe the gear will shift because also, uh, with the current changes in the in the interest aspect, that may also increase the capacity of majority of Kenyans to own lands. Thank you. Yeah, you mentioned something to do with funding and finances. Let me just come back to you, Paminas. Mm -hmm. Should the government come up with a kitty for mortgage for for the low income earners? Uh, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> but the reality is, already the government has come up with something they are calling KMRC. That mm -hmm. is Kenya Mortgage Financing Company. This is intended to 
provide where the banks were actually requested all the 60 banks in Kenya were actually asked to put in some money so that they can be able to facilitate the construction mm. and last week if you you are the people who gave us in the news that <laughs> actually the banks around four banks plus uh, mm. around six banks had given 1.2 billion towards that kitty so meaning the money is already being provided as a as a part of the share mm. shareholding mm. by the by the by the by the banks or, or financial institutions we also have 10 circles which have already been shortlisted and these circles have a membership of more than 100,000 members. That means if this circles to, and also the, the financial banks are able to finance, the government can give what we call a guarantee to the de private developers that once the houses are complete, the guarantee uh, that the government can buy off those houses and sell to their own citizens, those who can afford an extended mortgage, uh, make mortgage through the KMRC, the Kenya Mortgage Financing Company, mm -hmm. and that the cycle becomes easier. So the private developers will develop with the surety of having the government to to give them uh, actually the the market mm -hmm. or buy off all the units, even if uh, even if they have not been able, the government has not received all the cash from the the buyers. Mm -hmm. But you know, the construction people will come in and say we have factors such as uh, the, the cement in Kenya is four times higher in the, mm -hmm. uh, compared to other countries, yes. or high cost of land, high labor cost, you know, among other things. Eh? Mm -hmm. So, how do we strike a balance at the same time offer affordable housing, Steve? Mm -hmm. mm. I think uh, we need to really have uh, ways and incentives how we can be able to, so to do as we do the general and be able to, to involve the stakeholders. You know, we find that there's a production, people are cement, mm. steel, think, uh, and, and the more of those subsidies, uh, subsidies so the, the people actually making as easier, affordable, those those products, so that people, as a construction, people can come in and actually find even uh, more of even in inviting people who can finance us, because that's we are ready to build. And more of you see, you find a gap also, when you find about the labor, we find there's a gap of labor. Skill labor is quite uh, not uh, sufficient for us. So we find that there is so much things to, to look at. But I believe you're headed in the right direction. And actually coming to terms, because I believe the population is still growing. So even those those statistics will keep on increasing. Mm. So there's that need. There's that there need to have things and measures done. So you need to sit down stakeholders, the developers, the entirely so that you can be able to, to get to the root of this, uh, this issue. And now we can be able to move forward. Okay, what's yeah. the way forward, Pavinas, to achieve this, this affordable housing? What's the way forward according to you? Uh, the way forward is uh, for Kenyans to embrace the government agenda of, big, uh, of mm -hmm. the big four agenda on housing. Mm -hmm. That is by participating through contribution. I know it has been a very uh, controversial debate of the 1.5%, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I think uh, if we only look at the positive side without necessarily having a pessimistic idea, we can all book. And by the way, I, I must alert you mm -hmm. that majority of Kenyans, most of the people who have gone to the to register are mm -hmm. the middle income those who are going to register for the government scheme mm -hmm. because they know that this is going to be a reality. And as I said earlier in my terms, this is going to be something that will be achievable. It may not happen in the, in the next three years, mm -hmm. but it may happen in the next 10 so years. So 2022 should not be the target. I'm not saying it should not be the target. <laughs> Let it remain the target yeah. because you know when you have a target, you can either shoot on the target mm. or maybe come closer to where the target Treat. is. Mm. But the reality is, I believe with the goodwill of the government, they are going to be able to achieve that. But however, I also want to challenge the government to improve on the infrastructure. Some of us develop in Kiambu, some of us develop outside Nairobi, and there is no sewer rain. So if you're developing where there is no sewer rain, the cost of sewer is yours, the cost of uh, access, access road is yours, the water source is yours. So if the government can bridge that gap, mm -hmm. believe you me, we can also be able to provide affordable housing, which actually may not necessarily go to the rate of 600,000, mm -hmm. but maybe something that is between 3 million to 7 million because that is also some other class that is not usually catered for. So is faster transport and efficient transport <laughs> not only transport, a solution? Only infrastructure. <laughs> no, no, that's a solution. Yes. Considering that if these faster transport, like efficient, fast trains, if they are con connecting towns like Nairobi, Eldoret, mm -hmm. Mombasa, if mm -hmm. you have fast train connecting this town, it can actually, actually <coughs> improve housing deficit in Kenya. Do you think so? Yes, it could in a way, but also there is that aspect that Kenyans <laughs> want to be associated with urban centers. So <laughs> but if we build those even, trains, we can make Mombasa an urban center, yes. Eldoret an urban I center. What, what we can say is mm. not about the infrastructural development, but also encouraging the devolved units. Mm. That the county governors, our government should also take up the challenge and participate towards the housing 
uh, the housing gap mm -hmm. by providing even government land which is idle and give uh, attract private developers with what they say 70 30 percent in terms of, of, of partnership mm -hmm. with the government many developers will go i'm willing to go to mombasa to develop <laughs> i know many others are willing to go elsewhere <laughs> but the question is oh, yeah. is the infrastructure right mm -hmm. for me to go in mm -hmm. and, uh, and and risk my investment in such an area Okay, Steve, are you ready to, to go to Mombasa? Yeah, I'm ready, ready. And what's the way forward? <laughs> the way forward is, uh, as Pamela was saying, mm. we need to, really to have those infrastructure up and running. Mm. And we find also there are time challenges when you have uh, even issues with approvals, you know, these, these, these regulations by the, by the counties. <laughs> so I was talking to a friend of mine, also a developer like Pamela here, mm. and you find that they are preferring out of town to these satellite towns. Like in Kitengela, go to Kitengela, now it's booming mm -hmm. the the, the Ruiru, you know people are moving away from uh, from from this town center because you find inflated prices and i think also that regulation about the prices to make it i uh, think there's that need to have that uh, that uh, streamlined mm -hmm. pr pricing of, mm -hmm. of the unit so mm -hmm. i think also and also i think for us the youth uh, because you are now you're talking to the youth it's high time because mm -hmm. you find the government has gone far ahead and done the tv these tv programs that are that are that are meant to benefit the youth so i think once we we, we we push and actually I think for the youth is more of not wait for the opportunities but to go and take them. We could be aggressive enough that we able to utilize these opportunities that come up. Okay, okay. Yes. Thank you so much guys. Your final comments and how can people reach you, especially those who want to get houses and develop homes and buy buildings and buy houses. How can people reach you from us? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I am accessible through the, our website. We have our website, which is www.nyotajemahomes.co.ke. You can make an inquiry on Facebook, and you can make an inquiry on Twitter. With all of these places where we can access uh, the youths, you'll be able to access us. We can make any advice, even if you want to buy some land anywhere. Even if you don't have somebody to consult, just come to us. We will not charge you for consulting, yeah. because I believe even if you don't buy from us today, tomorrow will be our next customer if you are satisfied with our investment advisory. So I look forward where youths can come up and decide that you are going to own up this nation by investing in real estate. Remember, it's only in real estate that you have viable long-term investment which you can leave and inherit us to your children. Once again, come to Nyotanjema Homes. We are going to provide the solutions in real estate for you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Pamanas. And Steve, how can people reach you? We are all over <laughs> social media. Okay. So you can get us at Swadeb, at Swadeb Construction. Yes, we have our website, www.sodepconstruction.co.ke. So you can always find us there. Any queries about the construction sector, anything, we are, we are there to help. We believe that we, you, you dream and you actualize your dream. So we welcome you to come and partake us. And we have partnerships with developers, real estate agents. So it's an all-rounded, uh, all your queries can be satisfied for the construction industry. And thank you again for having us. Thank you so much for making time to come to I254. And today it was being was business tuesday so what what i can i can say from the discussion we had in the long run affordable housing is achievable those are not my sen sentiments i'm a panelist <laughs> anyway that makes the end that brings us to the end of business tuesday my name is miriam masava good night god bless you the buzz is up next <laughs>